gonna have the Bible open so he could help us. Just because I feel like, I don't know, there's something going on somewhere in the room. Welcome back, guys, to the Out of Service Podcast. Woo! It is good to see you all here again with us. Well, we're not seeing you, but you're seeing us wearing the same clothes as last time. You know, my cousin <laughs> came at us the last Why time. He was up? Just so they know, because they're, go- yeah. they're going to bring that up. They're going to know. Yeah, they're going to know. So we're recording on the same day, guys. But you have small hands. That's for you guys. <laughs> what are you, you doing? You can't keep that in, Allison. I have to. Guys, the camera makes things look way smaller than they are. I'm actually six foot three. Six foot three. So let's start with our highs and lows. Okay. Okay. So Allison, what is your high? What is your low? Oh, you know what? I do have a low. Okay. I do have a low. And I forgot about it in the last episode that we filmed. Like an hour ago? Like an hour ago. Right. But. So. um, I have naturally curly hair. But I blow dry it a lot. Don't come for me. And basically. Um, I have a little blow dryer brush. Mm-hmm. Like it's a blow dryer, but a brush and the same thing. You is that a Dyson? Dyson? No. No. What is a Dyson? no, it's not a Dyson. The Dyson is something that every girl wants with yeah. curly hair. At least she has um, I want one. Cool. I do want one, but my my brush broke, and that's the only thing I would use to straighten my hair. Oh. So it's giving. We're not gonna straighten my hair for a little bit. I love that. Yeah. We, yes. like, we actually like your curly hair a lot. Oh, yeah, thank you. I, I don't think they've actually ever seen it. I've seen it. Ever worn? No, no, them. Oh, no, they fine. haven't. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because well, wow. you live with your straight hair. It's we just a lot easier, though. like a lot easier. Mm. Like the curly girls know, it's just a lot easier. You just wake up. You don't have to try. So that's my low and my high. Is uh, I think I'm this close to convincing my dad to get me one. Ooh, mm. a Dyson. A Dyson. Like the real I don't Dyson. think you will though. I don't know why. How I much are Dyson's? Huh? Like How much? Four fifty. It's five. They're like almost six. Yeah, five, yeah. almost six. I'm not gonna buy it for myself. I refuse to buy it for myself. But yeah. you bought like way. Yeah, that's one thing I refuse to buy. Oh, you, yeah. oh, you just don't want to buy it because mm-hmm. you feel like it should be a gift from someone. Mm-hmm. Oh. So if a man out there, the man wants to get it for me. This Not this dumb, right man. here is a ref. If you ever are thinking about what to buy me, this right here is the moment. All right, my low. <laughs> um, what's my low? What's my low? Uh, I don't think I have one. Honestly, I think my low. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't have one. Okay. Oh no, I do, I do actually. I just remembered one. I had like a really bad stomach ache the other day. Oh. And Did honestly, you have the runs? It's a little personal. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were close enough to talk about that, but it's not. Definitely didn't have the walks. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, did not walk. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and my high is Real Madrid won the league this past weekend. Oh, they so, won. Yeah, they won the league. So I'm really excited. I'm really happy. I might not seem like it right now, but I was screaming and making fun of my dad. Because he's a Barca fan. Oh, my oh. dad, too. Yeah, poor dads. Yeah. It's been a They've been bad sick. year. They've been sick. It's been a bad year. They've been down bad. But I haven't, so glory to God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. Very selfish. Yola? I don't think I had a low, actually. Oh, period. I, aside from the one I mentioned earlier, but... Which was? I was tired from work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad low. Tired. Yeah. Um... But this week, I actually started to speak to a friendship. That's my high of the highs. The high of the month. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. So it was crazy because it was from God. Because you knew that yep. where I was standing on where I needed to stand. That way, the way that man walked into church? Yeah. I was like, wow. Um, God placed it in my heart to speak to him. And then it's funny because he mentioned that... He, like he felt the need to speak to me that same day and he was mm-hmm. gonna go up, t- up to me and then like try to speak to me and then i was like i just hit him up i was like oh like we need, let's get a bite after church <laughs> like oh i called him actually i called him or wait what did, did you I do? call him no i texted him mm-hmm. and then i was like hey like what are you doing today da, 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 da. he's like i'm going to church okay I'll, I'll go and then we can get a bite after and then we talk we talked it out and now we're good 
that is such yeah. a yeah it's a blessing because i was not going to talk to that person yeah no it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful. It, but it's something that the lord does yeah. mm. Mm. but honestly the lord is good and his forgiveness is mm-hmm. a good thing to have in your life mm-hmm. we love seeing friends get back together i mean we we had our we had our past oh we forgave each other i think you've just been a forgiving man this year i was just very frustrated I, and that's something that the lord was working on me at that time too i would just speak out of frustration a lot but and, that's what i'm saying like i see yeah. the growth in you because i feel like you wouldn't have like we wouldn't have fixed things if it was giovanni from three years ago no. and then also with this friend yeah i feel like you also wouldn't have had an open heart to do it either yeah so god is good gotta be obedient to the lord that's the high of highs right now sorry tanya you can't follow that up can't. Oh, Tanya. Go on. Um. Well, I didn't have a low, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a good work week. <laughs> Tanya, your your high is still important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to write a quitting note. For the All highs, highs are important. Right. Right. All highs are important. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's get, get into the topic. <laughs> What? What are we today, doing today? Uh, what are we doing today? So we got a couple of questions from <laughs> some people that are watching. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> now, nah, honestly, we got a bunch of questions, guys. We got right. so many questions. Guys, Thank you. Overflowed. I love you guys. Overflowed. Yo, like, if, we might not get to all of them. Yeah. Honestly, we might not. Yeah. Hey, if you want to ask questions, guys, get on the Instagram because there's people flooding the DM. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you want your Actually, question though. heard, heard, listen to, and <laughs> heard. <laughs> This is not I'm done. I'm done with my points. He said it twice <laughs> in two different ways. The first question, which was, I was a bum. Wait, turn that camera screen this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just because, just because we want to protect your privacy. Well, yeah, like, we want to make sure that you know that this is a safe space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the first one is, what inspired you to make the podcast? Ooh. 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 Yeah. Great question. <laughs> great question. <laughs> this, this is so unserious. Hold on. Ish. No, that's a great question. That's a great question. So basically, the way that this podcast has started was about six months ago. Six or five? Yeah. When was October? Six months ago? Yeah. Yeah. yeah six. six months ago, because we're now in May. Wow. It was October 21st. I'll never forget the day. But I had it in my heart, this idea, and I didn't know where I wanted it to blossom or with who I wanted it to blossom. So I just had it to myself. But I want to think that God revealed it to me in the most perfect time. Mm. And it just started off with a business venture. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it didn't start off that way. It started off like a personal fun thing that we could do in our group that we go to. So I brought it up to Dan. And I remember I brought it up to him. I think this is the first time I've ever texted you ever. I was like, okay, mm. hi, Dan. <laughs> I know you're a leader, but um, I have this idea. What do you think? Like, we just want to get your approval. And I shut it down. He did. He did. He did? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I no. did not know that story, though. <laughs> no, he was like, love the idea. Bring it up this Friday. So I was like, all right, period. Brought it up that Friday. And, of course, the only people at group, us four and then two other people. Mm-hmm. So... It was six of us, and the six of us that were there when I had said the idea, um, I believe it was Dan who brought up the podcast. I think to add context, our group, after we do the lesson, Mm -hmm. after, like, we all just be chatting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, exactly what you see is what we used to do. We used to talk, and it would be a running joke. It's like, yo, we need a podcast. Yo, we need a podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then when she came up with this idea of doing something for the group Mm -hmm. and we were all talking about it we got really excited yeah Yeah. and then we can keep going (laughs) yeah we got very excited um and then dan just said the word podcast Mm. and immediately everybody agreed like no one had any thought doubt or whatever all of us agreed all six of us and i believe the next sunday we were right on it right we yeah. were well, right we in were. it we <laughs> were <laughs> i remember it because we used Yo. to go to panera yeah and we, just yeah. talk talking about we whatever would, we came up with yeah. yeah we would meet at panera and talk about one the business venture that we want to go into and then to the podcast yeah 
and i remember we were like yeah like we're gonna get this we're gonna get that we're gonna start posting in like literally weeks like don't even, <laughs> don't even worry like we're gonna be on tour in like the summer <laughs> like today, yeah. yo so, <laughs> wait we have to shout out chris chris used to ground us oh for yes. sure he was like guys make the instagram account first <laughs> <laughs> guys <laughs> alice and giovanni had us Competing with Apple <laughs> on the stock market. Right. They, like, we had a jet they were already. Like, they yeah. were like, wait, how are we, we going to split up, like, the brand deals between all of us? Yeah. And Chris was like, how about we make an Instagram? <laughs> how about we open Yeah. I, I think that he was he was there in that moment for a reason, right? It was yeah. definitely to crown this because we were way too, like, me and Yoba just had <laughs> the highest of expectations. But, so, yeah, it was us. And then... Due to just like us being in different journeys, yeah. some people went their own way and it was us four. But I think the craziest part about it that does always get to me and reassures me that this is from God is the fact that when we started this and we were meeting, we weren't friends. Mm. None of us. Like sure. we yeah. had. Well, we yeah, were, we, were, we were OK. Yeah, I think we were good, were we? We were, yeah, we, yeah were okay. we were we were yeah, yeah. we were friends but so, apart from that we, but not yeah, like but yeah. we weren't like like how me and tanya are now how me and are now, now. Yeah. yeah how you guys are now mm-hmm. so yeah it's crazy yeah yeah it's, it's insane <laughs> yeah so Life can change quickly i think the reason why it always it took so long for us to like actually start it is because we had to get to know each other mm-hmm. like i think those meetings that we would have the way that like maybe ten percent of the meeting was productive, and then the other like ninety percent was us just chatting and yeah. like just getting to know one another and like That's seeing every yeah everybody's yeah. point of view, um, was insane. Like it was ins- like we I there's like pictures of us in Christmas sweater well me in a Christmas sweater mm-hmm. like that's how long it's been mm-hmm. since we've been trying to do this because we've been we've been tried right like we've been going we've been through trying. it a lot. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, those first episodes that we filmed, <gasps> I still have them. I still have them. Oh, on release. Maybe when we get to a certain amount of subscribers, yeah. we'll release like the first episode. The first, first. first? I mean, yeah. it was definitely trial and error. Like we, oh. first we started off with just the mics. Oh yeah. No stand. Yeah, and yeah. it was like everybody was moving. Nobody was like. <laughs> It was bad, and it then we started bad. off with iPhones, and then we got to a camp. Like we've been, we've been evolving through the way. Yeah, but I think the only inspiration that I can think of was God. Amen. Oh. And right. mm. I think He gave me a vision, and I was just the speaker of that vision, and you guys saw the vision too because you guys agreed. And here we are, filming a podcast every week. Every week. Devoting our time every week. Yeah. Yo. I think, like, the main thing is, like, we always told each other. Mm-hmm. Like, even when it was getting difficult, like, we would literally text in the chat. Yeah. And we would say, guys, this is a test. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. don't let this get you down. I know it may seem difficult. but and, and it came from each and every single one of us. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't Tanya saying it, it was Giovanni. If it wasn't Giovanni, it was me. And if it wasn't me, it was you. Mm-hmm. And we would all just push each other. Like, we know this is from God. Yeah. Right. Like, this, this, none of us are trying to do this for our own like glory for people to see us like yeah we're probably gonna get more hate from doing this than anything uh Mm -hmm. and i think we already have we have have, actually unfortunately like the i think the main vision we have is that one day like this will go out to like many different people yeah and like they'll be blessed from just like hearing like our own personal life or testimony and then just like the word of god I think that also goes into the next question, Ooh. which is, what has been the most challenging lesson you have learned in this journey? I think I learned two, two big ones. I think the first one and the most important one is trusting in God, mm-hmm. because I think one of the biggest things is sometimes when I don't see something, I don't believe it. So I think for a, for a little bit, there was a, there was a point where we didn't have a place, we didn't have like the equipment and i was like we're never gonna get this going like who's gonna have the time to edit it who's gonna have the time to monitor like the the stuff and every single time god has provided some somebody or something or the money even because we've put a lot of money into this um so that's probably one of the biggest 
ones and i think the second one is friendship yeah because i do think that oh god let me go to cry hold on (laughs) i do think that the people sitting here today have made me the person that i am i'm gonna keep it like that before i cry so go ahead girl we love you yeah all right i think the toughest challenge throughout these past like what like half a year like six months um i think it's patience Mm. um i know like there's so many people out there that have like goals visions dreams that they want to achieve and i think sometimes this is something that i struggled with is if i didn't see something working out quickly i would give up Mm. and that was something i always struggled with is like i had big aspirations but i didn't have like the work ethic behind it Mm -hmm. so then it would fail but then i think doing this and like actually giving it my all and like on top of like the schedule that i have Mm-hmm. I somehow made time to like show up and like yeah. be a part of it because I honestly believed in what God was trying to do through all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's honestly one of the most satisfying things I do in my life now. Like I don't see it as work. Like I honestly come every single Sunday <laughs> and like it's like I'm with my family. We're just chatting, yeah. we're talking, and I love every second of it. And all I had to do was just be patient and trust God. Oh God. <laughs> That's beautiful. I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. What, what about you? you? I think having an open mind to new friendships is mm. one thing that I've learned. Yep. Um, in the past, like I, I only wanted to be friends with a certain type of people, like people who are like out, very outgoing and stuff, like me, very mm-hmm. outgoing people. But like. I don't know. Like I tell Ali, I was like, I would have never thought that we would have been <laughs> friends. <laughs> like, like I'm like, yeah. it's like God is God is good, and and just opening my heart to other people. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I think that that was my biggest lesson, and of course, patience too, because we're. I mean, we we still have so much more growing to do. We have yeah. so many things to do. Um, patient with myself patient with everybody you know we we all require patience for everything that we do in here because <laughs> sometimes we get our, under each other's skin as well and mm-hmm. and just being patient graceful to each other loving to each other Sorry, yeah. mm-hmm. you know i agree yeah. anya uh i think for me i i want you guys to help me say it correctly yeah. but that there's always there was something always against us yeah. yes that it was not easy yeah. because there was something someone Mm. really stopping us in the path yeah to get here i think that was really challenging to accept yeah. that it's gonna happen mm. yeah. no matter what yeah but you, know, you yeah. know what verse goes perfect with that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, prosper. Mm-hmm. stop playing yeah. yeah because the enemy was forming them Mm-hmm. No, it was a lot, guys. guys. <laughs> yeah. like, like, yeah. it, we they, laugh right now. Yeah. No, we're, yeah. Yeah. Like, this will be a testimony. Oh, no, day. for sure. For yeah. sure. Because at the end of the day, like, I honestly do believe, and I tell them all the time, it's not if. I don't say if with mm-hmm. this podcast. I say when. When. Because I don't Amen. think it, it is going to rely on how good we are. It's honestly going to rely on how good God is, and I know he's good. I know he's good and I know he's going to back us up. And I know Mm -hmm. that whatever people, whatever like audience he wants us to reach, they will get reached in due time in his perfect time. Not when we want it. Amen. Because it would be nice right now to get a million views on (laughs) it. It would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I think in the growing stages, God works the most. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now is when we're going to learn the most. Later is when we're going to bear the fruit. Right. from this learning stage mm-hmm. and i was telling her i'm so surprised that doing this i'm never embarrassed about it because mm. i feel like a, before like i used so to be true. yeah i used to be so embarrassed of like posting like a video of me talking or like doing this like this to me maybe mm-hmm. like a year ago would have been embarrassing and i'm like oh i'm getting 100 views like that's embarrassing like i need to mm-hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> even though I should start watching the podcast <laughs> but well, thank you for yeah watching. yeah please yeah. start watching more and longer please <laughs> and share 
but yeah no that's why i think it comes with patience also that's another indicator that's from god because i girl i would never see myself doing something like this especially with you guys like i don't think people understand we're such an odd we're group. such an <laughs> odd <laughs> group yeah. yeah and i don't think i would have ever taken the time and i don't mean this in a rude way but like yeah. i would <laughs> I don't think I would ever taken the time to even look at you guys. No, not oh. to look at you guys, but to truly understand you, like the way that I do now. Mm. All yeah. of you guys, because I don't think I've ever, like, I've been in this church for so long, and so have they, and we've never true. crossed paths, like paths. That is so true. Yes, yeah. me and you know each other for so long too, like yeah. a decade. Yeah, like, like I've been insane. in church yeah. for. Ali too. If I've done mm-hmm. that, seventeen years. You know what's crazy? You have pictures of us of us but, we've but never, we never spoke yeah. i have pictures i have pictures with you i have a what? video of you when rapping oh yes i, <laughs> I have yeah, a video true. of you rapping that was crazy. i have yeah. yeah i have pictures of him in a retreat you were also at that you were all at the retreat that was we've, crazy. Yeah. and we've never like sat down and talked yeah. even when we went to the same group like we never took the time to form a friendship not all of us, but obviously, like, mm-hmm. I never took the time to form a friendship with you mm-hmm. or, or you. Yeah. But now it's so different. It's so different. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Now it's so different. Yeah. yeah. I honestly think the fact that we became closer, it helped the group. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. Because I, yeah. I think maybe sometimes, without knowing, there was, like, a sense of, like, seclusion. Right. Mm-hmm. But now that, like... Right. I, at least this is how I feel. Like every time I go to group, I feel like I just love everyone. Yeah, same. I just love everyone. I'm I'm here for all of them, and like I just I feel like that connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if even because I'm I'm always the type of guy like I'm never gonna text you every day. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna talk to you every day. Yeah. But like I hope that everyone knows that like I'm there. Mm-hmm. Like I'm there for you. Like I care about you guys. Yeah. But yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's so interesting, guys. <laughs> like, even the people that watch from church, like, they probably know. Like, we, they've never seen this together until now. Literally. Yeah. Till this. Till this. These yeah. Like, <laughs> and now, like, I can't even, like, my Sundays are with them. Like, I'm right. with them so and much. And I look forward to seeing you I look the forward, church. yeah. Like, where's where's my uh, Where's the squad? Where are my people? Right. <laughs> Why are they not in the gym? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have nicknames for them now. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have nicknames Tanita, for all of you guys. Denish. Dana. <laughs> Ali Pop. Ali Pop. <laughs> Next question. Okay. Please. Hold on. All right, we got to do it again because I wasn't ready. Next question, girly pop. All right, so the next question. Yeah, a little fun one. How old are you? How old are, How old are you? y'all? I mean, Allison's pretty old. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with my age though. I'm 23. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 22 which is insane by the way. why because i don't know why i thought she was 20 oh she was girl 20. yeah old. she's an oldie uh, hey if you're old then what are we girl i'm 18 <laughs> <laughs> yeah 17 <laughs> no ya te pasaste 17 <laughs> not till it's your age <laughs> 17 this is a, this is the um put the big number on the screen we can put the number on the screen. Just <laughs> say it. I know that age For sounds serious. Lessons. She calls me ancient. Grandfather. Yeah. 25. Okay. 25. How old are you again? Me? You didn't say it. I'm 23. All right, guys. All right. So you heard it here first. That Wait, you're almost 24. He's I am. My birthday oh, is yeah. coming up. My birthday is Happy coming birthday. up. Oldie. That's true. All right. Love her. Next question. If you can ask Jesus to solve one problem, what would it be? It's mm, a great question. Oh, Whoever sent that in, you're really Thank good. You. Yeah, you're really deep. Thank you. You're really deep. Oh, <gasps> he already your did. Your mic is so far away. <laughs> he already did. He solved the problem already. He didn't solve one problem. He solved, he solved all, all of them. Problems. Oh he solved wow. All the problems. Next question. <laughs> Shut us Enough down said. so fast. <laughs> Okay. When was the time someone showed you <laughs> love like Jesus? Oh. <laughs> That's easy for me. Go ahead. Pop okay. off. So, a little bit of my testimony. <laughs> mm. 
Just because somebody wanted to talk about that today. Yeah. Um, so I, I was diagnosed with cancer mm-hmm. when I was 18. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did it for the drama. <laughs> DK. He was like, no way. <laughs> like, we haven't heard this story. <laughs> yeah. I, we needed a little gasp, okay? <laughs> no, yeah, it's gasp. We're, we're, oh, mm-hmm. never mind. Thank you. Yeah, so I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 18. Uh, I had recently just gotten baptized like a week beforehand. Um, <laughs> wow, no, that's tough. No, that's yeah, tough, 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 tough. tough. Um, and honestly, it was a tough time. Mm-hmm. Tough time in my life. Um, recently, you know, in college, I think my first semester was just about done. Second semester was starting. Um, going into church, really starting to get active. I get baptized and then boom, a week later, I got diagnosed with cancer, instantly surgery, instantly into chemotherapy. And that is, I think if I didn't have the people in my life that I had, I don't think I would be a Christian today. Wow. Um, wow. Because I did believe in God, but I don't think my foundation was as set as it is today. So I think those people around me showing me what a true believer looks like really helped. Yeah. Um, and I want to give like the special shout out to my friends, mm-hmm. Jasmine, Mauda, um, even my, I'll, I'll say this right now. You can feel the love and compassion like Jesus and they don't have to be Christians. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. Um, my friends who were worldly cause Jamie, now she's Christian. She gave oh, her life Jamie. to Christ, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but at that point she was worldly and, but she showed me so much love. She was always there for me. And then my other friend, JP, he, uh, was worldly and we kind of lost connection. Mm-hmm. Like we don't really talk now, but he's always going to have a place in my heart. Like I'll always cherish him for being there for me and showing me like so much love and like, and a point where like you're not only physically down, mm-hmm. you're emotionally, spiritually drained and having people there to like show you like you matter, keep fighting, keep going. It, it's, it, it makes the world of a difference. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So when I was younger, I came from Guatemala and mm-hmm. I didn't know English. I think my ENL teacher, oh, what was her name? She was, she spoke French. She was Madame Schleif. Oh, Madame. Oh, yeah. Madame. Yeah. Madame. Yeah. Madame. You're watching. Hey. <laughs> 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 Not the hair top. Not the hair yeah. <laughs> top. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, again, you can see the love of God. Yeah. Even if people that are not Christian. I don't know if she was or if she wasn't. Mm-hmm. But the patience she had with me and the love to a total stranger, because I didn't know her. She She didn't know me. But she had such a patience that she taught me English. How do you teach a person a whole language in a, a hard year? language? L- yeah, in a in a year, because mm-hmm. I learned it in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I, I saw Jesus in her, and now mm. looking back, that was God, right there Very in that man. French woman. Amen. Yeah. Love, love Madame. Madame. Yeah. Madame. 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 Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Or how do you say thank you in French? Genesis. I don't know nope, French. Uh, I don't know. Um, je m'appelle Daniel. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Oui, oui, la S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît, madame. Slide. Slide. Je ne sais quoi. That yeah. means I don't know. I know. Yeah. Um, I think there's been a lot of people in my life. One, my mom. But the one that I think of the most. I love the Monte Carlo's. But I, the one that I think of the most, oh wait. Oh. Can I say two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, ooh, hopefully I can get through this. But I think the first one is my great grandmother. We love you, Abuelita. She's in heaven now. But she was definitely one of. She was basically the foundation of our whole family. She was the one that gave her life to Christ first, wow. and she actually raised my mom and my aunt and my other aunt and that's the reason why my mom is so faithful in church now is because of her and if it wasn't because of her then she probably wouldn't have had that foundation of christ um she's just like every time i saw her it was just pure joy and she used to always read um psalms 91 all the time and i remember one of the biggest things and i'll never forget this is that every night before we went to bed because she would always stay in my room Mm. 
every night before we went to bed, it was Yo te bendiga, Ali, and that's Aww. God bless you, Ali. And she would always say that every time. And I remember sometimes I'd be like, oh, I don't want to like say it, so I'd be fake sleep. Oh, girly pop, she would repeat it until I repeated it back to oh, her, because wow. <laughs> she was like, No, we're gonna do bendiciones. Like you're gonna, you're gonna do it. So I think, wow, knowing that because of her, I am where I am today because of where my mom is today. I could wow. forever be grateful, and that was only God. And the fact that she had to raise my mom mm. is the only simple reason that we're here. So that's one of them. And then the other one that I was thinking before I thought of her, when she popped into my mind, was my friend Janet. Aww. Because mm. me and Janet have been friends for like 10 years. Yeah. And she's seen me in like the worst stages of my life. Like sometimes I look back at myself, and I'm like, girl, what were you doing? Like you were so irritable like you were so mean you were so argumentative like you took mm. everything personally like it was such a like i was the biggest mean girl of mean girls if you knew me in high school you know that and she was still my friend through all of it like me and her did take a little bit of breaks but she was my friend through all of it and she never stopped loving me for who i was mm. and even in my darkest times so seeing her now where i'm like feeding her the word and we're talking about the word and stuff like that and her telling me that she's encouraged by me and like she's inspired by me is insane so i think her love of like never ever judging me and never ever leaving me behind knowing that i was a really bad person could have only been god so mm. yeah i love that yeah we love her She's probably going to cry when she sees this. <laughs> She's a car baby, Janet. just like me. <laughs> but yeah, I love you, girl. Love you a lot. Damn, it's tough for me. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, I, don't, I never really had like anyone like that. I mean, I can't think of a situation. I think I've spoken to you about it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Dan. Yeah, I think Dan... <laughs> Huh? No, he's being genuine. He's I'm being, being genuine. genuine. Yeah. Yeah. When? No, yeah, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Why? Because I've seen like this develop, and now him saying that is really big, and he means that, and he's trying not to cry because he means it. <laughs> I I just think that I don't know. I was just so rude to you, and like. Although I was rude to you, like, you still, like, loved me and you still, like, you didn't mistreat me at all. Like, you didn't have any type of, like, resentment towards me. <laughs> and, I don't know, you just still showed me love, which is, this is amazing. I'm not to look. Not just crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Those eyes are a little water. Right? I'm not crying. <laughs> okay. If I didn't, if I didn't cry this morning, I would have already cried. Yeah. Uh, um. I, I don't know why. It's hard for me to cry. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to cry. I'm probably gonna cry when I go home and I pray about this. <laughs> um. But honestly, I, I've never met someone with Yova's heart. Like I will honestly say, anyone can say whatever they want about this man. But you can't talk down on his heart. I'm not gonna cry, bro. <laughs> like, and that's the you might fact. not like him. Yeah. But to talk down on who he is, like, in his core, how much he cares about people, you cannot slander that. Insane. Yeah. And I think the only reason, and you're right, because it, it wasn't me. Like, it was literally like I understood where Jesus took me out of. I knew how bad I was, and he loved me anyways. And I knew who you could be because I, I saw the heart that God planted in you and how specific his gift was for you. And I said, I'm not going to show him a side of me that is just going to deter him from you. Wow. wow. So that's the reason why I feel like that day I was calm. Yeah. You get me? And I, I honestly feel like it, that was God because I feel like if that didn't happen, this wouldn't happen really i think if i blew up and he blew up 
yeah. and then we were just mad at each other, this would have never happened. Probably, yeah. I think we can say that about a lot of things. Though. Yeah. Like, like I think a lot of different scenarios show us that God was like putting his hand on certain situations and saying, no, you're going to put yourself on the cross and die right now. Cause mm-hmm. I need to work because mm-hmm. I need certain things to happen for me to be able to work in your lives. Mm-hmm. And I think that was one, one of them. Right. And I thank God for it every day. Cause I love you. Lonnie. Love you too. Yeah, like I can't imagine now me and him not being okay. Yeah, that's what he <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah, don't look at me. No, he's not look at me. Tanya is literally crying. Yeah. That's so sweet. I mean, it's beautiful to see you guys speak so highly of each other. Yeah. Honestly, the enemy just be trying to split people up. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. The enemy be trying, and you know why? Because he's scared. Yeah. He's scared because ooh. What happened in the Tower of Babel? Go ahead, yeah. just spit it up. He split them up because why? Because when people work together, they can reach heights that they couldn't apart. Mm-hmm. Mm. So confuse them, make sure they can't work together, and that's it, right? Yeah. And of course, that was God confusing them, changing their language. But the devil uses that same thing. Confusion is one of the main ways he works. And if he can confuse you and put bitterness and anger in certain relationships, you guys won't work together. You guys can't even stand each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad we went through what we went through because it built us up. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Built us up. Period. The boys. The boys. The boys. <laughs> <laughs> Our boys. Yo, Vitus. Yo, Vitus. Yo, Vitus. <laughs> Yo, virus and Denise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, someone else that I kind of want to talk about is Ooh. Pastor Ooh. Natalia. Mm. For me, honestly, that was such a long time ago as well. I don't know if she remembers, but mm. when I was new to this church, they put me into Youth Without Limits, and I didn't want to be there. <laughs> but she came to me. She was like my therapist for a good like two months, I think. And every Friday, we used to talk after and during that time i don't know i was so numb like i didn't want to know anything about anybody yeah but she really opened up my eyes to how good jesus is Mm -hmm. and how much he actually loves me Mm -hmm. because i really felt like why would god love me Mm -hmm. like why am i that woman Mm -hmm. really made me realize that jesus can love me no matter what that marriage is a blessing yeah Yeah. pastor danny and pastor nati thank you pastor Nah. I was I was coming to Pastor Danny. I'm like, I remember you when you had braces. <laughs> <laughs> and like you used to serve us lunch because yeah. he used to work for the school. And like he was just so funny. Like I remember him <laughs> that. Like every time I look at him, I always remember. Cause he was the one that got me into iPhones. Oh mm. my god, that man always had the new iPhone. Really? And I'd be sick. <laughs> I'd be sick. <laughs> but he always had the new iPhone. He would always come in like, Yeah, I got the new phone. <laughs> Oh, now yeah, I know where that school. stems from. That's where it stems <laughs> from. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Danny. Yeah, but why do you have a new iPhone? <laughs> every year? She's like, you yeah. don't upgrade every year. Yeah. I'm like, no. And now he, he doesn't upgrade every year. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> now he waits. But like, get back on to it, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. What is one spiritual tradition you would like to have with your family or future family? Mm. Go ahead. I think it's just... um. And I think me and my family kind of do it mm-hmm. um, now, even though we're, n- I, w- I would say before I started going to church, we weren't religious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like w- I was Catholic before I, I turned Christian. And, but we would always sit down at the dinner table and eat. But something I want to add to that, which, you know, sometimes you forget when you're not really like active in Christ and like want to always like abide to like loving him mm-hmm. is prayer. Yeah. Like, I want to pray as a family. Like, I want to make that something that's super important when I mm-hmm. have, like, my kids and my wife is, like, we're going to be a family that prays. Because mm-hmm. if you're not praying together, you're it's not right. staying together. Amen. Mm-hmm. Clip that. I, I think that's <laughs> the best one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you? took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think a simple one is just going to church. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh, that one, yeah. I was yeah. going to say That's that. Big. Like, as a family. As a family. As a family, yeah. yeah. And together and all. 
Yeah. Wait, quick question. At a certain age, do you not force your kids to go? I would hope that at a certain age, I don't have to force them. Right. That it's just so natural to go. If you're under my room, my roof, sorry, you're serving the Lord. And you know what? It's serving. worked for me. Because <laughs> that's how my mom was. Listen, my mom used to drag me to church. <laughs> like, she used to yeah. literally, like, you don't thought, go to church, yeah. I'm going to be angry the whole day. <laughs> and knowing that, like, you just don't want my mom to be angry. So I was like, yeah, no, I'll go to church. Or it was like, oh, you don't go to church? You're not going out. Or yeah. you don't go here? You're not doing that. So, I, but I do think that that, because of that, I'm here. Mm. If, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Although there was a lot of times I went to church where I didn't want to, but I'm here now. Mm-hmm. And I never left. Mm. And now my mom doesn't drag me to church. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we live at church. Now we, we live at church. Do. And I'm not going to lie, it's not so recently that she wasn't dragging but me to church. You know what's crazy though? I feel like our story is different. Yeah. Because my family was Catholic, but they at a certain point gave up mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were like, listen at this point you're old like yeah. mm-hmm. if you don't want to go like you i always had an attitude mm-hmm. i was always like why are we going i literally don't care we never pay attention it doesn't do anything like the only good thing is afterwards we go out and eat like can we just go out and eat so, yeah like that's i was like the, I was, no i was bad i was bad that's so funny but then i had an encounter with god mm-hmm. and then he changed my heart and i was the only one in my family going to church yeah mm-hmm. and then i wanted to go and i it was guys I was taking the bus and train to get to Freeport Aww. to go to church. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a license. I didn't even have papers when I started going to church. Yeah. Wow. And then I just said, no, like, I'm going to go because I love God. And, like, to know that I was the kid that said, I'm not going with you, to then turn into, I only want to go to church <laughs> is, like, it's two different sides of the coin. Yeah. But I guess it really does depend on your parenting think, stuff. Yeah, I think God just knows, the like, the plans that mm-hmm. he has for you. So I was talking about this with Jasmine because, like, it's very different. I commend you guys for being able to go to church without the support of your family because I could never. And I think God knew that. God knew that my mom had to be firm in that. Mm. And she was the one that was going to bring me. But you guys, like, I I could never. So I applaud you guys for that. But I think God just knew his purpose and his plan for you guys. Yeah. Because I could never. Like, I'm not taking a bus or a train. (laughs) Yeah. It is different. It's very like, coming different. Coming from the world to church is so different than coming from like a... A family. A family that already yeah. serves yeah. at church as Christian. It is yeah. very different. I will never know the struggles you went through though. Mm-hmm. Because you guys go through completely different struggles. Yeah. Where maybe like you go to church and your family lives at church. But then certain things at home. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. completely different things. Meanwhile me and maybe Yoba. I'm not going to speak for him. But I never had that like... Like... People talk about God because mm-hmm. it's just a natural thing. Like in Spanish cultures, like, si Dios quiere, stuff yeah. like that. Like people will bring God up, but never teach you about who he is. Mm-hmm. So we had to like almost like be thirsty for it, I think. Yeah, you know, like, no, I, I agree. I think my my thirst came from an encounter with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know of God mm-hmm. at all. Never. I've never been to a church with my parents, step a foot with my parents. Yeah. It's just been God calling me since i was a kid mm. i would always get invited to churches and i was just like okay i'll go to church <laughs> even yeah. with like prayer when i was young i don't remember who taught me how to pray yeah it started naturally wow yeah but that's that's crazy yeah it's, it's insane but yeah no, i was force-fed <laughs> like literally i went to a christian school since i was in fifth grade so i was always learning about the bible da 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 always at church wow my church was my school at one point yeah so you were there i was there every single single, like i knew everybody like i've known everybody that's passed through those doors and left those doors like it's insane but no i can never and it's funny because the reason why my mom was was so like she was like you need to go to a christian school was because in the church that we go to they present the children Mm. and usually they're babies Mm. But I got presented, like, as a full six, (laughs) seven-year-old. So, like, usually the apostle, like, he's, like, like, (laughs) I'm just sitting there, like, (laughs) like, usually it's a baby, like, that they're presenting. 
so i remember i had to stand there like i had a dress and everything but my brother was just born like very mm. recently so he was being carried but usually like the apostle carries the children he prays for them yeah. like obviously i'm a big kid like he wasn't gonna carry me for the stage <laughs> but everything that the apostle <laughs> prophesies over my life showed my mom that she had to put us in private school mm. okay. which is insane because the way that money was always a struggle for us is insane how she was able to put two kids through private school it's gone from yeah. my brother's been there since pre-k and he's graduating next month yeah. yeah like it's insane like That's she amazing. was able to pray like pay for all that so next question um, what prayer have you been praying the longest for the longest time Oof. I don't know what I want to say it all loud. <laughs> oh, you have we'll to now. <laughs> oh, you have to I now. Can't. Whoever yeah. asked this question is a savage, by the way. Yeah. For real. For Let's real, see. for real. For sure, for sure. Uh, hello, go. You go. I'm going to think of one. I have to think about the it. The prayer too. I've been praying for the longest time. I feel like I don't pray the same prayer. Yeah. Like for that long. That makes sense, because at a certain point, I just say, "God, I'm leaving this in your hands, and I trust that your will will be done, and I'm fine. Like, mm -hmm. I'm whatever, whatever you decide to do, I'm cool with." Mm -hmm. So I, I never pray for the same thing continuously. I guess the only thing that's like a basic prayer is just for like health and for like the safety of my parents, my friends, people I love, um, for discernment. I'm mm -hmm. always praying for discernment. I think that's the main one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, nothing insane. Nothing insane. I've just been trusting in the Lord. What are you? Ali definitely has an answer. <laughs> I don't think it's like the longest though. I think it's what you just said. Okay, so what is it? I don't know. It depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely had something come to mind. I did. I okay, did. Okay, so can you say it? Um... I think one of the <laughs> I'm gonna say it this way I think one of the prayers I've said the most is if they're not for me remove them yeah. or if it's not for me remove it and it's worked every single time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. stop playing mm -hmm. so who are you trying to remove now have you prayed oh. that for the podcast no for me I'm, I think, okay, I'm naturally a very anxious person, <laughs> I'm very, very anxious, so I always pray for God to give me peace, mm -hmm. and I can do that, and mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I felt that one. Yeah. Amen. I felt that Never one. since, I'm chill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yoba. Patience. Through Patience. another one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the thing that I, the most that I pray for is probably my family that they're, they get saved. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. Yeah. All of them. Yes. Yeah. That's the biggest one. And then the second one, any weapon formed against me shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. You can every tongue that he speaks mm. against me. Amen. <laughs> so amen. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next. All right. Next question. Think about your spiritual best friend. What do they do for you? <laughs> so Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is My phone fail. Oh. Oh. What's going on? This is crazy. Alarm. So I put an alarm at 9 a.m. yesterday. <laughs> So and I could wake up at 9 a.m. today. <laughs> and it just rang. Guess what just went off? Oh, baby girl. Wait, crazy. what was the question? Your that spiritual just, best friend. Mm. What's your spiritual best friend? And what what does that mean, friend? spiritual best friend? Like the one that most helps in your walk. With you. Oh. Well. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go on. You okay, go. I'm always first. I'm always first. <laughs> Honestly, um, you guys probably know him. His name is Jesus. Nah, I'm joking. Period. I'm joking. <laughs> that doesn't count. That's cheating. 
Um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's between like two people, but I think I'll go Jasmine. Yeah, like, I Jasmine agree. is my spiritual best friend. Um, and honestly, she helps me a lot. Like I feel like she keeps me in check. Um, she's always <laughs> she asking. Made- you know what I'm saying? Like, she's always asking questions. Mm-hmm. And they're not, like, intrusive questions. They're just, like, honest, like... Honestly, like, I think. Like, she's honestly like, How, how's your day been today? Like, what did you learn from the word? And I'm like, oh, yeah, let me think about it. Like, yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right. Let me think. So she just keeps me, like, you know, like, there. And then I think I also do that for her. So it's it's a good balance. But um, honestly, yeah, she's been she's been great. She's actually the person that invited me to church. So Aww. she takes that evangelism stuff serious. She's still doing it. Good for her. Good for her. Well, yeah, I would say for me it's Deborah. Mm. Yeah, the she's goal. the one that brought me to group. Mm-hmm. And she's ever since, she's always been asking me and making sure that I'm okay in my spiritual life. Mm. And I think I could always go to her if I have any questions and if anything is bothering me. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Your yeah. virus. <laughs> the virus is crazy. Your virus. Your virus. I was okay. Ali's also my spiritual f- uh, best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, not the. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think you bring clarity into my life. Clarity. You bring clarity. Like sometimes you'll tell me something that I don't want to hear. Yeah. And I'll be like, <laughs> "You're right." <laughs> <laughs> and he hates to admit it. But it's a good thing. Oh, you hate to admit it too. Yeah, it's a oh. good thing. Yeah. Why do you hate to admit it? I don't hate to admit it. It's just not what he wants to hear in that moment. Oh. Yeah, in the moment. And then I'm like, okay, she's right. Then I have to do this and I have to do the other. It's good to hear it though. Yeah. What about you? Um, I think all of you guys, all three. Yeah. Because I learned so much from each of you guys differently. Like, so much from Tanya. Like, she's, like, Tanya is a woman of, like, not that many words. But I think that teaches me something. Aw. And mm, to be quiet. <laughs> um, I changed my answer. I think just these two. <laughs> um, I kid. I kid. And I think Giovanni. I think Giovanni doesn't know how much he's helped me. But, yeah, I don't think he knows. I don't think he understands. But he he definitely straightened my path a lot just with his friendship just with who he is and he teaches me something every day trust me like i'm (sighs) one of the biggest things i don't know how to say no when he's been very like on me about that about saying no to certain things and not overworking myself and I don't have to feel bad if I can't do something, so he's very good at that. But also, he keeps me accountable with God, and I love that in everything that we do, God is present. And in any conversation that we have, God is there. Like, we'll have very deep conversations. We'll have very, like, like, the other day we had a conversation about angels. Like, we'll just, we're very edifying to one another. Mm -hmm. So... I do appreciate this friendship a lot. And then Danny Pop. Denise. Denise. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna give him such a big head because he's has such a big head. <laughs> but I think I've learned so much about you. And I've said this to you before, but you are an inspiration to me when it comes to your walk with Christ. Yeah. So wow. and I do Great see leader. Christ in you. And I think because of that, we're able to have this friendship that we have now. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for that. God is good. Amen. Amen. All right. Period. Let's see how many questions we have left. Because the there's pe- so many. No, because the people did a lot. <laughs> yeah. sorry, if we didn't get to your question, <laughs> I'm honestly sorry. We tried to get to everyone's. We'll do yeah. two more. Also, a lot of you repeat it yourselves. So yeah. There were some of the same questions. Yeah. Oh, I keep getting chills. <laughs> All right, just a second. Um, I mean, we kind of already got into this, but what's one of y'all's biggest challenges in life, and how did you overcome it? 
Santo Dios. The biggest challenge in my life? Um, the biggest challenge? Me repeating it like it's gonna give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest challenge? <laughs> I can like, start. I can start. Okay, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Just, mm, biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges is that I doubt myself a lot. Mm. It's always on me. Oh, always wondering. And it gets me tight. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, um, I don't know. I doubt myself a lot. But I overcame it with God. Period. Being yes. in church, reading the Bible. And again, being with people that always made me feel comfortable and that are edifying my life. Yo, Tanya's like, growth? Yeah. Oh, nah. Y'all can see it in the bud. Yeah, nah, <laughs> real. Yo, yeah. there was moments I would speak to Tanya. This is maybe over a year ago. Yeah. Maybe two yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. And this is when, like, she was doing stuff for group. Like, she was helping out. Yeah. But then I was like, Tanya, you need to do more. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, you need to yeah. do more. You need to do lessons. You didn't. need to do this. And she was like, "You're crazy. I'm never gonna do that. I'm Aww. not for that." Like blah, blah, blah. quoting, I I used to say, "Never. You are never gonna catch me giving a lesson. You're never gonna catch me doing worship. Never." And I was Same like, girl, you and Look you know what you I, told? I said? I said, <laughs> "Watch what God does." I said, watch what God does. I should yeah. be giving them lessons. Yeah. Giving them less lessons. <laughs> yeah. Stop playing yeah. with yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Up. Amen. Challenge. I thank God for her life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I overcame it completely. I think God is oh. always working, right? So mm-hmm. It's definitely better. I feel like some some challenges aren't to overcome. Like, mm-hmm. oh, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> we should, you know, we should be overcomers, but... Paul oh, had the thorn in his Paul side. Paul had the thorn in his side, right? Mm-hmm. Like I wonder like it's very much debated what that was for him. Mm-hmm. Some people say it was like um a speech impediment. Some people say it was like he literally had like seizures. Mm. Oh, I heard that, yeah. Uh, I we don't know, yeah. right? We can, you know, try sure. to you know, see what the best uh theologians have to say about it and their research and stuff like that, but we'll never know. And I think that's the same for all of us, right? Like I feel like all of us have like that thorn mm-hmm. in our mm-hmm. side that like we, we're, we've asked God like help me with this get this out of my life and maybe he hasn't taken it out yet but it's okay like God will glorify himself through it mm-hmm. you know and his grace mm-hmm. and, and I think that's the important part in that verse is that his grace is sufficient for you Amen. right sometimes it's not about healing it's about do you have his grace yes or no done you know yeah Amen. Yo, Vitus? You want me to go? I will. I think I've, I've mentioned this before, self-sufficiency. Mm. Just, ah, that's, that was so big on me because I was just <laughs> like, I don't need nobody. Yeah. You know, like, and just being able to just rely on other people is big for me too because I just, it's just, it was just, I mean, it's so hard. I mean, I still struggle with it sometimes. I'm like, like just, allowing to just let myself trust other people and then yeah. just i don't know how to i don't know how to explain it but it's just i've it's always like just been go. so independent yeah, yeah it's it's since a kid i've been extremely independent so like also like um accepting help sometimes too mm-hmm. like like i would be like i don't need anyone's help i can just do anything by myself like, i can just figure things out by myself and just like Learning, oh, like no, you need people's help. Mm-hmm. You know, like you you need to be helped, and and it doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you strong, because you're you're acknowledging that you need the help, and you're gonna grow. So I think just just that letting letting go of that like that own like self sufficiency and just independent person mindset, and you know, I don't think we're called to be like that. We're called to be a family in Christ and Amen. love one another. And yeah. I agree. 100%. Your turn. <laughs> Your um, turn. Allez, pop. I think one of the biggest challenges for me was always thinking that everything needed a response mm. and that everything needed a reaction. Because I used to be very argumentative. Why are you looking like that? Hey, what? <laughs> no, I'm praying. I'm sorry. <laughs> that everything <laughs> needed a 
reaction because I think I was very spiteful and very argumentative. And I think as I mentioned before, um, this is the person that came to test me, huh? <laughs> but anyways. Yo, facts um, though, facts. Like I said, like I mentioned, I don't know if it was this podcast or the other podcast, but I mentioned that in high school I was very much a mean girl and always just arguing with somebody, angry with somebody, mm. just fighting people with my words. And I was very mean. Like I would, I was that person that would literally like hit below the belt. So I think being argumentative was definitely one of those things. I even got detention for being argumentative with a teacher. But um, I think before that quality was very bad in me. But I think now it's a really good quality that I have. Because I'll never allow someone. Mm, how do I word it? Like I'm very good at. I don't want to say I'm really good at making my point, but I do stand behind my beliefs and my opinions. You stand on business. Yeah. Biz. On biz. <laughs> um, and I think learning to fight, well, not fight, but discuss and argue the healthy way has definitely been one of the biggest things in my life. And I said this to you over the other day, but silence is, is, a, response. is a response. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned going overcoming those challenges is that sometimes no response is a response and it's more effective than us going back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges I had. And now I hate confrontation. So God did his thing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you might need confrontation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I always let you know how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Um, I think for myself, I've battled through a lot of different things. Um, oh, us too. Yeah. <laughs> really, Mom, us <laughs> too. No, I, know, but I don't know which one to pick. Mm, yeah. Because <laughs> they're all pretty bad. I think the one thing I struggled with, honestly, oh, I'm about to expose myself. Uh, I was very lustful. Mm. I was a very lustful person. And I think getting to the point that I understood that I put women above God mm. is a, a, it was like a reality check for me. Um, yeah, that was tough. That was tough to think I loved God, but in reality... I would do more for a woman than I would for God. Wow. Um, mm. When in reality, the best version of myself I could be for a woman is when she's number two. Ate and God's up. number one. <laughs> you ate that up. You ate that up. Yeah. So that's kind of the journey I'm on now. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I've overcome it fully. I think God's definitely working in my life. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to be like, I said this in the other podcast. Like, I want to be somebody that a woman could be proud to call you know, theirs and to be a good husband, to be a good father. But first I need to have God completely number one in my life. No one can even get close to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You love that. Mm -hmm. Live. Last question. What book in the Bible has had the biggest impact in your life? Nice. Santo. That's light for me. Job. Without mm. a shadow of a doubt, it is Job. Yeah, don't um, my pastor, Pastor Angel, uh, and I think I think it was Charito and a couple other people when I went through the cancer, mm -hmm. they said read Job, mm. and I didn't understand why, but I listened to them anyways, and I was pissed. Mm. I was pissed because I think sometimes that we as believers in God want because we believe in God for Him to make your life easy or give you all the things you want or give you health or give you this but god i've i've come to the conclusion god sees further than that mm -hmm. god sees further than your health god sees further than your finances god sees further than your relationships god sees further than your friendships no matter what state those things are in that should not dictate the way that you see god mm -hmm. and i think the moment that job ends and you get to see how God answered Job, 
mm-hmm. when he got mad and finally like basically like was saying to God like why did you do that to me and God just shows him like the universe and like <laughs> yeah. everything he's done and then Job's like oh got it I am nothing mm-hmm. I am nothing compared to you you are the almighty creator and how could I ever like even doubt you for a second mm-hmm. um, so just understanding that God is more than just my healer he is my savior I would say the book of Matthews I'm, I'm always stuck in Matthews <laughs> you know the last time we were reading and i was like oh my gosh like this yeah. and that and that and that yeah, we were dead. we were matthew's good yeah is this wait look, can we say that was the first time i think me and you've been quiet for the longest oh yeah <laughs> that, no yeah. that's how you know it's got because you guys yap yap we be okay, yap, we yap, had yap, airpods yap. in yappersville population you two <laughs> girl population three and you're the president <laughs> oh <laughs> that's ridiculous it's okay though. We will. Yeah. So Matthew. <laughs> yeah, Matthew. I mean, it it speaks on like Christ speaks to us on how to to live our lives and stuff. So I think that was just very big for me setting the example. You know, that's it. It's okay. It's Matthew's. Mm, I was trying to think. Um, there's a lot of books in the Bible. I think Ruth is one of them. The story of a redeemer, Ruth. But I think. Um, me and my mom were kind of like we didn't read it together but we were talking about daniel and i think that That book speaks a lot and it speaks out like you can take so much from it Mm -hmm. but i think what i took the most from it is being set apart Mm -hmm. and like being so faithful to god that you don't worry about what other people think of you and that we aren't from here and that no matter what we go through no matter what we're put in like the lion's den or, or the furnace or wherever we're mm. putting god's always gonna we 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 have his favor like we're his mm. children so i think that's one of the biggest books right now it's being set apart i remember the lesson you did on that that's fine. those were his first we were talking yeah. about the, those were your first lessons yeah it's the daniel daniel ones yeah they were yeah, they were we're sitting outside <sighs> in the summer yeah, we were outside again. god is yeah good. we need to get outside for sure uh, Tanita? For me, ever since I was young, I think Psalms. Mm. Yeah. So Fire. That's a cheat code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? That's a cheat code. A Psalms is. Psalms is so. I good. think nothing can compare to Psalms. Psalms is yeah. fine. I just love it so it's, much. It's hard. I think if Psalms is not in your top three books, like if you ask any Christian top three books, I think Psalms has to be one of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a really it's good one. It's comforting, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember like my teachers teaching it to me. Yeah. And it's just so ingrained in me that. I always go back to it. So Psalms, <laughs> Matthew, Job, and Daniel. Mm-hmm. Now we gave you a little bit of our favorite books. Next episode, we're gonna go deeper. We're mm-hmm. gonna go into our favorite biblical characters, why we love them so much, how yes. they relate to our lives, <laughs> how they maybe don't, what we want to learn, what we want to take, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, guys. Thank you for it was watching. nice spending like an hour and a half with you guys again. <laughs> and we are out. Out of service. Out of service.